Welcome back to Glanigors in North Wales for the second programme from this popular UK karting location. The four finals that we're going to be bringing you are amongst the most competitive in the Ultimate Karting Championship, and competition is usually a great ingredient for excitement. Our first final of the weekend is for the ever popular Honda Cadet class. At the previous two rounds, both finals have ended with a red flag following an incident. Can they make it to the chequered flag this time? Well, let's go and join your race commentators, Jake Sanson and Alan Taddei, to find out. The well, Honda Cadet is always very tight knit from the start. Cole Denham and Lewis Islin from Thomas Min Spearing and Lucas Blanford. Hasty and Friend from Johnstone and Giblet Lee, and then Ellis Bell and Alex Reed from Charlie Wolfitt and Levi McCarty. White, Kodjakov, House, and Bo Rocky Mulvaney from Haas, Brown, Davidson, and Smith. Ava Dobson, Kieran Stewart, Oliver Spencer, and Ralphie Branscombe will finish up this 24 cart grid. It's going to be very interesting from the start. Lucas Blanford has our 360 degree onboard camera, and we're racing at GYG. Up through the first corner, already a very tough start as they come up into the first corner. Thomas Min Spearing was trying to get on the inside of Blackford there as they go up towards the first corner. Oh, that's Wolfitt going over the top of Bell. And Mulvaney and Brown have gone off in unison. Evie Davidson was collected as well. But incredibly, it looks as though they're pretty much all going to get going. Let's look from Albert Friend as he looks back. You can see the jostle already starting there and the shift in momentum means that Wolfitt has nowhere to go but he's launched over the top of Ellis Bell and they were very lucky to get away from that. Only Evie Davidson has not been able to restart. So Mulvaney, Brown, Wolfitt and Bell incredibly have all managed to get going again. That was a big move I think from Leon Hasty to get through into third position as he charges his way forward. They complete the lap. And it's no change at all for Denim and Islin. Hasty is there in third place from Spearing, Blanford, Friend, and Giblet Lee. But how on earth are Wolfit and Bell still going? Fair play to them. There is Charlie Wolfit. He looks as though he hasn't even taken a scratch. Yeah, he just carried on as if nothing had happened, but he's well down the field. Obviously, Lewis Islin in his first appearance in the championship, Jake. They're in second place. We're on board here with Lucas Blanford, winner last time. Thomas Min Spearing in front of us for the Synergy team. We've got two Synergy drivers out front though, and they'll be trying to work together to get away from Leon Hasty, the championship leader right behind them. Hasty, of course, flying the flag for SFR Motorsport. Here comes Spearing on the inside, and there's enough space for Blanford to get there too. That is absolutely perfect for the Synergy team. They are now one, two, and three. But Leon Hasty down the fifth position behind Blanford. That is going to be a tough fight back. Albert Friend, P6. Then Jacob Giblet Lee. Johnstone is in eighth place from Alex Reed and Alex Kodjikov. From White, House, Haas, McCarty, Smith, Dobson, and Branscombe. As we ride on board once again with Blanford, trying to make his bid on the inside of Spearing. Just a little nudge on the toe. You've just got to try and work that momentum and keep that advantage flowing on the straight. Watch out for Islin up in front. He's having a think about Denham. But as these two work together in unison, it won't be a long shot before the four drivers are close to each other and battling as a quartet. Lucas Blanford in fourth place carrying our onboard camera this weekend. He did that at Lark Hall and brought us a load of action. Stu Stratton has put it on his card again for obvious reasons. He is one of the most impressive newbies I've seen for a while, Jake. Lucas Blanford, dad and lad. Not in a team, he's up against three team drivers here from one of the, of the if arguably not the biggest uh, team in Honda Karting at the moment, the Synergy team. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can get past uh, Min Spearing in third to get third himself. This is the battle for the lead, Denham and Islin out front, but uh, what an impressive young man he is, Lucas Blanford. Is it too big a compliment for Lucas Blanford to say another Dan Ginshard? because he would have been in exactly the same sort of position a couple of seasons ago in Honda Cadet, if you remember. They were pretty much lad and dad, and they worked their way up uh, into one of the top teams in uh, Junior Rotax. And so it's a fairly similar sort of story, really, for Lucas Blanford, and he is doing a fantastic job as well. 
Leon Hasty still in P5 from Friend. Giblet Lee, Johnstone and Reed. Cole Denham though, still hanging on to this lead in front of Islin, but the gap comes down between Islin and Spearing with Blackford on his tail. There's only six tenths of a second between the four at the moment. But Denham, Islin, Spearing, Blanford, very close indeed, these four, and they're only going to get closer. Leon Hasty, the championship leader there in fifth place, not having it all his own way this weekend, that's for sure. He's uh, been uh, winning comfortably, generally, in Honda Cadet throughout the season. That's why he's got the championship lead. But the fact that you can drop your worst pre-final or two worst pre-finals and your two worst finals during the season over a six-round championship does mean that this isn't over by any means in terms of the championship. Well, absolutely. You've got to remember that, for example, Dan Ginchard actually has scored 264 points over the season, but on drop scores, he has 132 because he's got two perfect weekends to drop. So uh, fantastic work from the drivers uh, all the way through the season is what counts. You've got to keep your scores as high as possible throughout. Check out how quickly Thomas Mintz-Spearing is getting close to the two men in front. He's just banged in a new fastest lap. And now it's going to be three of them. Blanford is going to want to keep himself quite close to the rear bumper of Thomas Mintz-Spearing so that he can still be in the hunt. Look at how quickly they've dropped Hasty and Friend. Leon Hasty, the championship leader, of course, and uh, Albert Friend right up there in the championship, but uh, they've just gone under the drone, but you can see the gap they've got back to this these lead four here. Oh. As Blanford looks up the inside, but can't get the uh, job done there. But he is against Dan Lard driver in fourth place here, up against three team drivers. Not only that, from arguably one of the biggest teams in kart in the Synergy team. That is what I love about Honda Cadet and Cadet racing in general across all the different categories and engine builders because you really can as a lad and dad. If you get it right, if you get the setup spot on, you can take on the big establishments. And we've seen it time and time again with some great talents. I mean, look at people like McCauley Bishop. They started with pretty much nothing, a percentage of the budget compared to some of the big teams out there. And now they are a force to be reckoned with in the mini categories as they start to step up the ladder. So Cole Denham, Lewis Islin, Thomas Minspearing, Lucas Blanford, top four still together. Hasty and Friend are now two and a half seconds back nearly from the leaders. That is very difficult for them to take and they're going to have to work together to try and close up in the hope of course that these four do start battling and Denham just went very wide in the final turn so Islin will start to go for the opportunity Min Spearing is gesturing desperately frantically to Blanford look he just made a mistake he's lost momentum we can catch them is Blanford going to listen I don't think so on the inside line and he takes third place good move into spoon curve there so Blanford up into third position and that is well done from the young Scott Excellent work from him so far. Oh, he's going to run a little wide, though. Spearing's going to get back on terms with him. But again, Blanford will have the switchback maneuver on the inside for the compression complex. So he just hangs on to third position. It's getting very spicy indeed from seventh downwards. You've got Jacob Giblet Lee, Alex Reed, Brian White, Lachlan Johnston, Alex Kojikov, and even a couple of seconds back to potentially join the party later is Ewan House. So this could be an interesting squabble continuing here. But these five all going for seventh. Giblet Lee, Reed, White, Johnston, and Kojikov. And Alex Reed has just got himself into that seventh place past Jacob Giblet Lee. Yeah, it's a good move by Alex uh, Reed, the LM Motorsport driver, up back into the spoon. This is the battle for uh, third place, 59. Blanford still there in third. So he's splitting up the team. He's trying to make sure this isn't a synergy team podium. He wants to be on it with uh, them at least in third place. Good move from Ryan White, and he's followed by Lachlan Johnstone. They both pick up the pieces there to get the move on Jacob Giblet Lee, and that is all it takes, just a fraction of a mistake there, a slight drift wide, and that is all the momentum you need to storm up the inside and grab the initiative. So easy to let the cart drift just a couple of millimetres off the apex, and that is the reward you can grab as Alex Reed now has Ryan White bearing down on him and they will use each other to push away from Giblet Lee and Lachlan Johnstone. But Johnstone is now trying to shake off Giblet Lee, who tries to go for the move on the inside through the right flick, doesn't get the move done. So Ryan White is now in there behind Reed. And watch out for Lachlan Johnstone, the 98 cart in the middle of that gaggle. And he's going to try and uh, get away from Giblet Lee and try and move up into eighth place on Ryan White. Two by two, hurrah in the top four. Blanford moving past Thomas Min Spearing has not given the result he wanted and now he's lost the place anyway. Spearing on the approach to Devil's Elbow, able to get through in the left hand uh, kink. 
So an opportunity there as he gets into third position and there is the Synergy podium once again assured in the top three. Clean sweep on the rise. There is Charlie Wolfett and he's battling away with Levi McCarty. Great recovery this from Charlie Wolfett considering he was airborne on lap one. He is making an amazing recovery here. Albert Friend tucked up behind Leon Hasty. He's got an onboard camera as well. So let's see what Albert Friend is going to do. This gives you a real sense of the energy that runs through the car as you are pushing on that throttle and the vibrations that the, en the engine obviously takes. You've got to have great chassis flex for all of that energy to dissipate in the pro Oh, problems there. Someone peeling off into the pits to retire. Now, I think that will be Oliver Spencer to join Evie Davidson off the racetrack, I'm afraid. So uh, big problems there as Oliver Spencer indeed pulls out to retire. What a shame. It's not gone his way at all. And hopefully he will be back for more next time out. Meanwhile, up the climb. And White, Reed, Giblet, Lee, Johnston, Kojikov still tussling for that seventh place run. But Lucas Blanford still wants third position from Thomas Min Spearing. But he's decided he's not going to go for the overtake. He's trying to work with Thomas Min Spearing. They're going to go together to try and close up on Denham and Islin. Because let's not forget, this is not a team sport in the same way that any other form of motor racing is. There's no chassis championship. There's no team championship, as it were. So once you're in that awning together, you are racing for yourself. It is all about the driver in karting. And there's only one rule. You can race as long as it's within the rules. You can do what you like out on the race circuit. You can race your teammate as clean and hard and fair as you want. But you do not take them out of the race. And we've seen it time and time again in different categories, in different seasons, in different championships. And it causes no end of problems. So Lewis Islin is going to need to make the move on Denham. And he's going to need to make it as clean as a whistle. That battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th is raging in the background. It's uh, Ryan White that's through to 7th now. Alex Reed has dropped back to 8th, bringing him into the clutches of uh, Jacob Gibbett Oh, that's the Gibbert move. Lee. Islin gets Denham. He gets him. Denham just drifted slightly wide there at Damon Hill and is able to get through in the inside then, Lewis Islin. Oh, that's what I'd say. All it takes is a fraction of a second. You just drift slightly wide. And Denham has been having a couple of those moments in a couple of apexes, particularly into the final turn when the back end's just kicked out a little bit. Whether he's not quite happy with the tyre pressures or something's a little bit loose at the rear, whatever it might be, but it caught him out on that occasion. And now Lewis Islin, he's able to get through, but Denham's straight back on him. And he's there through the right flat out king. What a move. Great recovery from Cole Denham as they lap Kieran Stewart. That was well-timed from Cole Denham. What a way to recover. Stewart involved in that early incident, of course, so uh, well down the back of the field and uh, doing well to keep out of the way as well. Well, I'm saying keeping out of the way. He's got in the way of Min Spearing and Lucas Blanford's taking advantage. Great opportunity driving and getting him straight back is Min Spearing. Absolutely resolute. No, you're not having third place. I don't care if I'm getting held up by a back marker. You're not getting a cheap overtake on me today, Sunshine. Yeah, it was held oh, up. Oh, that's a big one. Now, that could be a red flag. Well, Alex Reed is out of the cart. Loughlin Johnston has come to a stop, and the cart is smoking. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Alex Reed, he's in some discomfort. I'm not at all surprised. That could be. Oh, look at that sportsmanship. That is great sportsmanship. I love to see that. Well, There's Loughlin no Johnston. recriminations. We're not talking about whose fault was this, no. who, who did what. They've had an incident. He's just concerned for his fellow driver. Yeah, they've had an incident. It's fantastic to it, see. It's racing, it's motorsport, it happens. But that is how you want to see things at the end of the race. That is what karting should be about. Yeah, that, and Alex, I, I love that. Well, I Alex love that. Reed. That, that is one of the moments of the season for me. That yeah. little moment there between the two drivers. Well, any moment of any season in karting. Battenberg's, of course. Now that's going to tighten the field up. Yeah, so it's Battenberg's down, not down, a race stoppage. Up. Yeah, slow down, form up behind the race leader, no overtaking. Oh. That's what the Battenberg means. You it doesn't what? look like these two out front are slowing down. Well, no, but for and Denham... if I was the marshal, I would not be doing that no. with a smoking car, because that could easily burst into flames. Well, Denham and Islin, their lead is going to be wiped out. Spearing and Blandford are now going to... They're not slowing down, though, Jake, are they? They still no, look they're like not. they're at sort of a racing speed to me. Have that's, they seen the Battenberg flag? That's because a good point. Oh, yeah, now they have. Now they have. Well, Denham and Islin, now they've uh, spotted the Battenberg. I think that was all because they were so intense in their battle. You know, you just suddenly get tunnel vision and you're only focusing on your race. Yeah. And uh, they just got a bit intense. Now they're slowing up. But I, I have to say, 
Better play to the officials Batenberg, there. Bat, bat, Battenberg flag, it's the black oh, and, and the yellow checker flag. flag. Checker flag's out, so it's finished under a Battenberg. Oh, contact oh, no, in the background. That should not be happening under Battenbergs. No, it should not. Oh, they should be slowing down, dear, not even oh, racing. Dear. Well, that is White and Giblet Lee, and that's going to promote Kojikov to seventh place. So White and Giblet Lee. Giblet Lee rightly puts his hand in the air. What are you playing at? We were under Battenbergs. We and shouldn't the, be racing. The marshal in the background is now waving a red flag, Jake, and it's gone back a lot. They've brought a red flag out after the race is finished. So that means that Lewis Islin is going to get the victory in front of Cole Denham from Not Spearing and Blandford. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a red flag come out after the chequered flag. Lewis, what an absolutely amazing result for you in your first appearance in the championship this season. Just talk us through that final though. Well, um, I decided to push my teammate to get away from um, a big battle and it turned out really well, so I'm happy with that. Okay, who do you want to thank? Uh, I want to thank my team, Synergy Factory team, my teammates for helping me with that and my, my dad and everybody who was involved. Okay, well done. A controversial end to the race there, Jake, with the red flag coming out after the checkered flag. I've never seen that before, and a bit of consternation in the paddock over that. Definitely going to be an interesting talking point. Leon Hasty, though, five points ahead of Cole Denham, and another five ahead of Lucas Blantford, with Thomas Min Spearing and Albert Friend chasing them down. Lothrin Johnston and Alex Reed look like they could end the season strong if they keep scoring the way they are. Well, a great race from the Honda Cadets once again. Join us after the break when it's the turn of the Mini X30s and all eyes will be on round three winner Jack Hobson. Can he do it once again?